Hello, boating intelligence. If you put a custom fat sack in your boat, it wasn't designed for it, and you have to run your cable all the way from the front power port to the fat sack at the back of the boat, then this video is for you. I had that problem, and I got tired of all this stuff everywhere across the boat, and causing a trip hazard. I'm gonna show you what I did to fix that problem. Here's a good winter project for you. I was running my power cord from my fat sack pump all the way from underneath the dash across the boat into the back here where the fat sack was located. I installed a power port here and it's on the engine box penetrating through into the engine box where I have good access to large cables with good amperage and good voltage. You'll need to find a suitable location for your power port that gives you enough room behind your mounting location that you don't have any obstructions. I measured behind my drink cup holder and I had plenty of room including the wires not to have any problems with interference with the engine box itself. Cup holder is easily removed from inside the engine box. Under the engine box and behind his big and beautiful 350 engine, you'll see the four screws that hold that drink holder in the back and you'll see where I drilled through the penetrate for the wiring that goes to that power port. I ran that wiring down to some voltage lugs and I made sure to use a properly sized fuse with heavy gauge wire that can handle the amperage of that pump. Right here you'll see that I used a lug in the same location that the engine ground is to get my ground to that power port and I ran my wire with another lug to the starter solenoid where I get the permanent hot so that I always have power to that, uh, that power port. In order to make sure you have a safe installation, you need to make sure that your wiring supports the number of amps that you're going to be pulling. In this case, this 1100 gallon per hour pump is going to be pulling six amps. So you want a size slightly bigger than that just to make sure and then have the appropriately sized fuse. My application of six amps means I should be using something like an 18 gauge wire where it will handle seven amps as shown in this image. But I decided to run 10 gauge because I wanted to make sure I had enough uh, capability in that power port for anything that I wanted to run. Um, I'm actually limited by 12 gauge, which is associated with the fuse holder. Because I'm using 12 gauge fuse holder, I'm gonna be limited to a 20 amp fuse. There's some special techniques for drilling through fiberglass, and a lot of people will actually tape the location you're gonna drill and then run the drill backwards instead of running it forwards so you don't splinter the, uh, the fiberglass. After drilling the hole, you'll pull your wiring through the hole. I twisted, as you can see here, and then I ran it down the engine box toward the engine and across the transmission using zip ties to make sure that it wasn't going to get caught in any of the rotating machinery. If you take your time and follow that old saying, measure twice, cut once, you can end up with a professional installation that'll last you for years. Now, where is that summer? I'm ready to get in that boat.